of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in all in wonder the king Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing this morning? Happy Mother's Day. Hey, all the mothers in the room, will you just stand up real quick? Just stand to your feet. Just look at how, hey, let's give it up. Now, I got a lot of the men, they're outside with me. We're taking care of Children's Church today. And I will promise that they will all be alive at the end of this next hour and a half, okay? But if you see me running along the side, it might be a good idea for you to come. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. We wanna welcome everybody. We have got an extra special service plan for all the moms. Moms, you can be seated. Thank you so much for everything that you've done. Moms, without you, literally none of us would be here. None of us would be here without you. And so we have got a special, special service. We have an awesome guest speaker. We've got the lovely, vivacious, vibrant, beautiful, cunning, smart, charming. Laura Vogt's gonna be bringing the message, bringing the word. I ran out of adjectives, honey, but you deserve every one of them. And we've got in all that's gonna be leading us in worship. So as you come in and find your seat, let's prepare our hearts and see what God would do on this beautiful day. Join me in a word of prayer. Lord, we just thank you for the sunshine. We thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for the mothers in the room. We thank you for the mothers-to-be. We thank you for the fathers and the husbands and the sons and the daughters that are supporting the mothers today. We pray you would pour out a special blessing on them, Lord. Anoint Laura as she preaches and brings the word that you've put on her heart. Lord, be with us as we corral these children. Lord, we know that we can do it by your grace. We know that we can keep them alive and teach them the word of God. And Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to be grateful for what the mothers in our lives do on a daily basis. Lord, bless in all as they lead us in praise and worship. Anoint them as they sing. And Lord, may we all exalt Jesus Christ. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, if we'd all stand to our feet this morning. I'm going to start us off this morning with a word of scripture from Psalms. It's Psalms 95. I'd like to read that this morning to focus us in, get us, get us all focused in on why we're here and who we're worshiping this morning, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyful, joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. In His hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are His also and the sea is His. For He made it and His hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker for He is our God and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of his hand. I know that there's been a lot going on in each person's life this week in different families' lives. We have individuals that we love and we care about that are having medical emergencies. We have lost those that we love. And we're so thankful that we serve the good shepherd who loves his sheep. And we are all more than victorious through him who loved us. So let's lift our hands this morning. Let's lift our hearts and our eyes to him who has the ability to save. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful where streams of abundance flow Every blessing you pour 
got papers falling everywhere this morning. We don't, you just continue that on until we get our papers straight. How about that, Grace? We'll get it in a minute. Oh, wonder. 
Lord, you are the, the very air I breathe. Lord, you who called everything into existence. Lord, you created us. Then, Lord, you died for us. You redeemed us. And we praise you for that, dear Heavenly Father, this morning. We thank you so much for this opportunity, this special time that we have corporately to come together to praise you and worship you for the awesome God that you are. And now, Lord, it's time as the ushers come forth, Lord, to give back just a small portion, Lord, of what you have so richly gave and blessed us with. And we ask that each person search their heart. And, Lord, we thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for this time. And we pray for Laura this morning as she brings us your word, that you would open our hearts and minds to it. May, may we be receptive to it. Give us hearts of clay, dear Heavenly Father, that's easily moldable, not hearts of stone. And help us, Lord, through the power of your Spirit to leave this place and to serve you in a mighty way. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Happy Mother's Day. Um, we've got some stuff coming up this Monday that we want to make sure everybody knows about. Um, not this Monday, this month. It's May. Month May. I can't talk. Uh, so let's start out by just announcing that tonight there is no youth group. So if you're a youth and you show up, you're going to be here alone and lonely with nothing to do. So don't show up because that would just be sad. Uh, on May 20th, we have the men's breakfast at 7.30 a.m. You won't want to miss that, and that's always here. May 21st is our Bland mission trip, so there's still opportunity for that. See the church office if you're interested in going to that. Women's Bible study will be May 23rd. Uh, and then we have fishes and loaves meal coming up at the end of the month. I hope everybody skipped their half-calf mocha macchiato this week and purchased some stuff so we can do the Operation Christmas Child. If you forgot to skip that, that's okay. I skipped mine. My husband gave me a gift card to Starbucks this morning. He's very considerate. So um, we still have opportunity. All this month, we're still collecting those small toys. Yo-yos, if you're not into cars, small stuffed animals. Don't take your child down the Walmart section, though. You will regret that. Go by yourself. I would recommend that highly. Um, I think that's all. Still, please be in prayer for Vacation Bible School that is coming up. And if you are interested in serving and helping with that, please see Jenny Clore, Brenda Lozier, check with the church office. Welcome everybody to um, Sunday service this morning and happy Mother's Day. Good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? Just to clarify, it's Brenda Phillips, not Brenda Lozier. Poor Brenda Lozier is over here about to have a heart attack. She like grabbed her bulletin. She's like, I'm helping with what? Come see me for what? Um, that cracked me up. She got that bulletin and was digging. It's Brenda Phillips, if you would like to help with vacation Bible school. So you're off the hook for now. <laughs> um, so happy Mother's Day to all you mamas out there. Um, it's an exciting day. I know it's a day of mixed emotions for some, and um, and so I'm. I for one am very thankful. I'm blessed that I grew up with an amazing mother, 
And one of the things I was just kind of reflecting on what this day means, and one of the things that I'm very grateful for is that my mom has taught me how to have a relationship with the Lord. Of all the things that she did for me and taught me, I just remember, even still to this day, when I go home, I know that my mom at some point, either at night or in the morning, she's going to get away and have time where she just goes and and reads the Word of God and and has prayer. And that's just such an amazing thing, and I'm I'm glad that she gave that gift to me. Um, David and I were kind of thinking back over Mother's Day past, because I've been in this weird season of, like, not necessarily mourning because my kids are sleeping through the night, but they're getting older, you know what I mean? And so um, we were thinking back to about five years ago on Mother's Day. I was stuck at home because all three of our kids were sick, and I think we were on, like, day five in our pajamas and had not, like, seen the outside world. You know, have you moms, are you there? Like, you know what that's like? And so I was feeling really sorry my, for myself, and I just remember, like, sitting, and I pulled out the journal to read the entry because I was really just praying. I'm like, Lord, I'm just feeling so selfish today. Like, this was my day, right? And I should be at church because I probably would have won the potted plant for being the youngest mom because I was young and still am, I guess. But, you know, so I was feeling a little bitter because I knew I probably would have got a gift, and here I am at home with sick kids. And now, you know, I would give anything to go back to just holding and snuggling like Piper, a few months old, and Micah cuddled up next to me on the couch at three. I don't think I would go back there. Maybe a couple hours with Micah at three because that was, now that I'm remembering, that was a very um, tough season. But uh, we were just laughing about different things like that. And I want to share with you one of my most there, – there were a lot, and I'm probably forgetting a lot. But I remember this moment in particular, an embarrassing, mortifying moment that I had as a mom. And it was for, with Micah, and he had his tonsils taken out not too long ago, maybe last year or the year before. I don't even remember. And so we, he was feeling a little nervous, so we went and bought him, like, the coolest Nike outfit ever. It was, like, baseball Nike. And so he was so excited, and we said, on the morning of your surgery, like, we're going to wake up. You get to put this awesome outfit on. We're going to go. You know, the doctor will put you to sleep. You're not going to feel anything. And then you get to put this awesome outfit back on. So we go in, and Dave was getting them all suited up and got his socks put on them, and I was filling out paperwork. And so we're, they take him back for the procedure, and the doctor comes out. He says, everything went great. You know, you can come on back and see him. And, um, and so as soon as we walked in that room, my eyes just went straight to homeboy's feet. Like, oh, my goodness, they needed a pressure washer, okay? And I'm looking at his feet, and I was like, Dave, did, like, you put his socks on him. Did you not see his feet looked like this? They took his socks off in surgery to put the little Paul socks thing on his big toe, his like they were so covered in dirt like all up underneath the na- Nancy kid close your ears cuz this is like her worst nightmare so much dirt underneath his nails not only was it long it wasn't perfectly long it was like broken half so it was like the snaggle long toenail And I know that those people were judging me in the operating room when they took his socks off of his feet. And, you know, Dave's like, well, you should have cleaned him, you know. Okay, he takes a bath on his own. I don't know how moms keep their kids' nails clean and their teeth brushed. The dentist asked me if they floss. Like, what is that? No, my kids probably do not floss. They're probably sucking down pixie sticks when I tuck them in at night. Um, But anyway, so it's Mother's Day, and I'm excited. I enjoy this day. Um, So let's get spiritual. If you want to stand up with me, we're going to read from Ephesians chapter 3. I'm going to read verses 14 through 21. It says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for all the mothers that are represented here today. I thank you, God. 
um, just for the blessing that we are able to have on your children's lives, Lord. I pray for all the women that are here today, Lord, and, and for the men, God, that might be um, struggling with loss, Lord. Maybe they don't have their, their earthly mother here anymore. I pray, Lord, for those that are caregiving, who have aging parents and that are caring for them. I, and I pray, Lord, for the moms that just have young kids that some days they just feel like they want to pull their hair out. I pray, Lord, that today would be a day of rest and rejuvenation for them. I pray that you would just dig into our hearts, Lord, and, and show us things in our lives that, that we can better, um, just to serve you better. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. So today I'm going to talk about spring cleaning. Um, and I, I came up with this because without fail, in the mornings when I'm having my quiet time, I like to sit in a chair in the living room. And it is a daily struggle to keep my mind focused on the Word of God and on my prayer because as I'm sitting there, I see everything, you know, and so I'm like, oh, there's a lot of dog hair on the couch, need to hit that, there's dust bunnies in the corner, you know, and I'm constantly thinking of things that I should be doing or cleaning, and I always have to bring my mind back in and say, that'll be there, like, just focus, right, just focus on the Word of God, and so one day I started thinking about spring cleaning, because naturally my mind went there, too, and I'm like, we really need to take care of this, we need to clean up around here and, and do some things. And so I just started thinking about that in a spiritual aspect and how in our lives there comes a time where we need to spring clean. There's things that we need to take care of. Um, and so my first question is, I guess, why do we spring clean? And the reason that we spring clean is because our homes have value, right? Our homes have worth. And so in order to maintain that value and maintain that worth, we clean them so that we can keep them nice and we clean them so that they feel nice. It feels really good to be in a clean house, doesn't it? It's just peaceful. You can relax. You can kick your feet up for at least five minutes and just enjoy it while it's clean. And so it just feels really good. And so the first thing that I want to I point out to, to you today is that no one pays a high price for something that's unlovable, undesirable, or unworthy. And the cool thing is, is that Jesus died for us. And so that means that we're lovable, we're desirable, and we're worthy. Not because of anything that we've done. We're not worthy because of who we are aside from Christ, because without him, we are nothing. And so, and so that is true. But I think a lot of times we, we struggle with, with realizing our own self-worth, with realizing our value, with realizing who God has created us to be, right? And so a lot of times we push ourselves to the back burner, um, whether it's just because we're selfless and we need to take care of other people, or maybe we see that the spring cleaning that needs to take place is just really daunting and big, so we think, eh, I'll deal with it later. But bottom line is, is that we have to realize our worth and who we are in Christ Jesus. And there's a verse in Romans, and um, it says, it's Romans 5, 8, and it says, for one will scarcely die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And I just think it's so powerful. Every time I think back to what my Savior did on the cross, when I think back to the pain and the suffering that he endured, and then when I think about the state of, the, of life that I was in when he did that for me, you know, when I was the broken down house on, on the bad part of town, you know, like that just, it doesn't have any value. But he paid such a high price for me. And when I recognize that and when I know that he's created me with worth, that he's created me to have relationship with him, well, guess what? What fellowship does light have with darkness? There is none. And so in order for me to have relationship and fellowship with Jesus Christ, that means I need to clean myself up so that I'm, I can present myself to him in a worthy manner to walk with him. And so how do we start with spring cleaning? Well, we start with the small basic stuff. I can tell you how it goes at my house. I walk into a room and I think, Oh, I'm going to wash the bed sheets, right? So we start stripping the bed because usually we launch into this kind of unexpectedly. Am I right? You don't, sometimes we plan a good spring cleaning, but oftentimes we just kind of happen into it. And so we strip the bed and we might see that we need to dust the dressers and things like that. And then usually for me, before I know it, it goes something like this, honey. And then eventually it results in eye rolling and Dave saying, I did not sign up to do this today. Why are we doing this? Like, this doesn't even need to be done. And that's usually how it goes at my house. But oftentimes, if we look at this spiritually, 
There, there are little things in our lives that we might see. You know, like we notice little character flaws or just little, little things that we think, you know what, I need to pray about this. Or maybe we're struggling with a situation at work or in our family. And, and so we're quick to pray about those things. And then sometimes when we're praying about those things, we can kind of get a little bit of a glimpse into maybe the root of the issue. Um, we all have, you know, big dressers or beds, those things that we just don't move every day, right? We keep the surface clean. We keep it looking nice, but it's not every day that we move around the big furniture and clean underneath of it. And why is that? Well, it's because it's exhausting, right? It's time-consuming. It's exhausting. Sometimes we're just terrified about what we're going to find under there. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm scared about what's under my kids' beds. I don't know. There probably are monsters under there. And then, you know, and, and we, can't, uh, we can't do it by ourselves. And, and another thing to remember is that oftentimes it gets messier before it gets better, Right? And so I started thinking about this in a spiritual aspect and how there's things in our lives, every person in this room, it can look different. Maybe for some, maybe that dust bunny under the dresser, maybe it's resentment in your marriage. Maybe there's something that is between you and your spouse that you have just held on to. Maybe it's unforgiveness to a parent or to a family member for something that they did to you or spoke over you. Maybe it's an addiction. Maybe it's something that you struggle with secretly. Maybe it's alcohol, pornography, drugs. Whatever it is, we all have something. Maybe it's smaller. Maybe it's something like our temper or, you know, things like that, our priorities. But we all have something that if we truly look inside, we realize that we've got something in our lives that needs to move because there's an issue that needs to be dealt with, you know. And so we have to remember that when, when we move the big heavy furniture, um, something cool happens, and that is light shines in those places, those places that used to be dark, dingy and secret and and they're just dirty the light can shine in on it right and when the light shines in on it you're able to see the dirt you're able to to um to see that and so um, proverbs 28 13 says whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy right and when christ sets you free from something you are free indeed and so as as painful as it can be as time consuming as it can be it's worth it to move that heavy furniture and to allow the light of christ to shine in on those dark places and to reveal the root of whatever the issue is whatever that thing is that's hiding underneath of there and then next we need to be patient with the process because usually when we dig into something it's not going to be accomplished in a day it just isn't. We have to be patient with the process. We, we move that big piece of furniture. We move the beds all out. And then usually we look around and we think, oh, my goodness, what have I created? <laughs> because it gets messy. At my house, it gets messier before it gets better. And this is where we hit a pivotal point in our life. Because oftentimes we move things around and we can expose things and we see the issue. We see what it is. And then we look at it and we think, oh my goodness, how am I supposed to deal with that? Oh my goodness. And, and we get terrified from the mess. And at that point, we have the choice. We can shove everything right back under the bed and say, forget it's there. Let's just leave it. Or we can continue piece by piece to work through the mess, to declutter, to get rid of things, to take things to the cross, maybe to go to some people and say, I forgive you, even if they haven't asked for forgiveness. Maybe it's going to someone and saying, will you forgive me? because I spoke this to you, and those things can be scary, they can be terrifying, and they can be daunting, but that is a pivotal moment in our lives where we need to say, Christ, I trust you. I trust you, Jesus. I trust you with this mess to help me sort through it, and we need to refuse to sweep it back under the rug. Um, and then another important thing is that we ask for help. There are times that when I will struggle and I will struggle and I will struggle to move that piece of furniture by myself, right? And sometimes it's not until we throw our back out that we finally say, hey, will you come help me move this? And oh my goodness, if it isn't amazing, you know, like you're, you're pulling this corner then you got to run over here, pull this corner, you know, and if you just ask for help, it's like, boop, you know, how simple it is. And so if we would just reach out and ask for help, James 5, 16 says this, therefore, Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it's working. And I believe that one of the biggest lies that the enemy tells us is that you are the only one. You're the only person. Because you know what? He delights in isolation. And if he can tell you, who do you think you are? You thought that thought? Oh, 
say, what? That's horrible. Like, who, who thinks things like that? Or who does things like that? Who says that? Who blows up on their kids like that? Who struggles with that addiction? Who are you? What kind of a person are you? And he tells us these lies, and he makes us look in places like this, and we look all around because everyone puts on their Sunday best. Everyone fixes their hair. I assure you, no one looks, looks this way when they wake up, with the exception of Piper. She usually... <laughs> <laughs> Looks like she came out of a cave, bless her heart. Um, she got my hair. But anyway, so usually we put on our Sunday best, right? We clean up all the surface, and we roll in here. And it's easy to look around and think, man, she's perfect. He's perfect. Like, look at his family. Look at all of his kids. Like, their house is just so put together, you know? And the enemy just tells us these lies. You must be the only person struggling with this. And he backs you into a corner. He isolates you. And when you're isolated and cut off, he can tell you anything that he wants because you don't have brothers and sisters in Christ speaking truth into your life. And so he gets you backed up into this corner where you're just no longer, um, you know, reaching out and asking for help from fellow believers. And that's a dangerous place to be. So I want to encourage you you know, to not feel like you're alone. Don't feel like you're the only one struggling. Don't feel like you're the only one in the situation that you're in. Reach out. You don't need to post it on social media, right? But find that prayer partner. Find someone that you can confide in and trust in and say, hey, I'm struggling. Will you walk with me through this? Will you help me? Will you pray with me? Will you be friend enough to tell me the things that I don't want to hear? You know, when I want to shut the door and push everything back under the bed, don't let me do it. You know, encourage me to keep moving forward. Um, and so after we take the time to recognize those things and, and to be brave enough to face those big things in our lives, then something really cool happens. And this is my favorite part after the cleanup, and it's the rearranging. And I love to rearrange my house. If you ever come in my house, chances are you've seen it probably 10 different ways because I like to move stuff around. And so it's really neat because when we do this, it shows the outside world that something's different right? People walk in your house and they are like, oh, cool. It's different in here. I kind of like it. I like what you got going on. And, you know, sometimes it's really big and they notice right away. And sometimes it might be just something small. Maybe you move something on a shelf and it might be the type of thing where it's like, something's different in here. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I like what you've done with the place, right? And so a lot of times, whatever it is that's been hiding under those big pieces of furniture that we deal with, whether how big or how small, it's important that after we deal with it, we rearrange the furniture in our lives, that we rearrange and that we put on a newness and a holiness to walk out, you know, in Christ. Psalm 34, 5 is one of my favorites, and it says, those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. And it's such an amazing thing to keep your face on the Lord, to keep the the light of Christ shining on you, because shame is a horrible thing. I don't know if you've ever walked around with guilt and with shame, but when the light of Christ is shining on you, and you can get rid of that guilt and that shame because you can boldly come before the throne of grace and ask for his grace and for his mercy because you're a child of the king and you have value and you have worth, it's an amazing thing to experience the love of God to come on you. And so in Ephesians 4, right, it talks about putting on the new self that is made in the likeness and the the newness of Christ, the holiness of God. Um, And so it's a cool thing to rearrange our furniture around to make sure that that we're walking in the newness and, and the holiness of God that he's called us to walk in. Another thing that we need to do is change our light bulbs, right? If you're like me, sometimes, like, we'll get down to one left. (laughs) It'll be so dim and dark, you know, and I'm like, "Eh, I guess someone's going to have to take that down and and fix it. Thankfully, I have a tall husband, and he can um, do it pretty effortlessly. But there comes a time where we need to change the light bulbs, and we need to wash up the light fixtures because they get nasty. They get bugs all in them, and it gets, you know, it gets grimy and dingy. And there's a couple things that happen when we connect to the source of power. When we change those light bulbs and those light bulbs are connected, two things happen, okay? And we are connected to the source of power, right? And so it shines a brighter light, yes? And then, and then we get to see the dirt. We get to see it when, it when it starts to form. We can see the dust. That sometimes my kids will turn on a lamp, and I'm like, ooh, under there it's kind of dusty, you know, and you don't see it until that light comes on. And all throughout the Gospels, we see where Jesus got alone to pray. 
He went alone. He would get up early in the morning while it was still dark, and he would go off and he would pray and, and talk with his heavenly father. He would bring the disciples with him, sit here, watch and pray. I'm going to go pray. And just like Dave tells us all the time, why do we think that we don't have to do something that Jesus himself had to do? If Jesus, who came to earth, fully God, fully man, had to escape and spend time with the father in prayer, guess what? So do we. We need a prayer life. We walk around completely weak, right? We don't have on our, our, our spiritual armor that it talks about in Ephesians. We don't suit up. I always tell my kids, would you go to battle in your underwear? I don't think so. You're not going to walk out in the middle of a battlefield in your underwear. At least I hope not. Not if they're out there, you know, with, with shields and weapons. You're going to suit up for that battle. And so my question is, is why do we do that every day? Why do you walk into your workplace in your underwear, you know, why are you doing it? Because your battle is not against flesh and blood. It's against the principalities and the, the forces that are at work that are fighting against you. And the enemy desires to keep you bound. And if he can convince you that you are too busy and that your prayer life does not matter, he has rendered you useless, basically. Because without the power of Christ inside of you, without a prayer life, you have no power. And so um, sometimes I can be a little heartless, and so I'm not trying to be. And I am by in no means imperfect whatsoever, and this is something that the Lord has really been working on in me because I understand busyness. I do. I'm a homeschooling mom of three. I'm in school full-time in nursing school. It is busy. It is hard. There is always a meal to cook, something to clean, a homework assignment that needs to be done, whatever. But if you say that you are too busy not to pray, I'm calling it. <laughs> You know, it, that is not true. That is not true. We make time for what is important to us, and we make excuses for the things that aren't important to us. And that is the bottom line. No budging. And so we need to make time to pray, whether that means getting up earlier in the morning or staying up late at night. The Word tells us, you know, it says, I hunger and I thirst for righteousness. And I don't know about you, but I have been hungry. I've been hangry. I get there, you know, and, I, and when you're thirsty, you know, and how refreshing that is. Like we've all, you know, that you're, you're craving that big juicy cheeseburger and, man, doesn't that first bite taste good? You know, you're so thirsty. It's such a hot day and you're outside working. And, man, that nice cold drink going in, it feels so good. When's the last time that you've hungered and thirsted for the word of God? Really ask yourself that. When is the last time that you have hungered and thirsted and that it was so satisfying? When you sat down and you had that time, it was like that ice cold drink on a hot day. It was like that first bite of that juicy cheeseburger. It was so good. And I don't know about you, but I eat a whole lot more than one time a day. <laughs> and so there are times throughout the day that I got to I gotta refuel. I got to come back. I need to look up a scripture on my phone or I need time to just escape and, and remember a scripture verse or just a little nugget, something to get me through, something to remind me to be patient and kind and loving and, and all of those things. And so I really want to challenge you all today to step up your prayer life. Step it up and connect to that source of power because it is important and busyness is alive, the enemy. If you are too busy to pray, you need to cut something out. You are way too busy. Um, and lastly, I want to hit on redecorating. Um, there is a scripture verse in 1 Timothy 6, 6, and it talks about godliness with contentment is great gain. Um, and it took me a long time to really understand that verse and, and to meditate on that. But it is such an amazing thing when we realize God supplies all of our needs. We have everything that we need according to his riches and glory. And it is a great thing to be content in your godliness. Now, not to stop striving after the Lord. We always should want something more. We should always be pursuing him and going after him. But just being thankful for what we've been given. You know, and, and I was looking at this thinking so many times, I probably ever, I cannot be the only one that does this. You walk into someone's home and you think, oh, man, it's so quick to be envious, right? It just comes so easy. You think, oh, they just have such an awesome dining room. I wish I had that. I don't have a dining room. Or, man, that wreath on her door is just so beautiful. Or her decor or the space that they have. Whatever it is, it's easy to look at someone's home and to be envious if they have a very nice home and, you know, of the space and things that they have. It's the same way in our own personal lives. 
right? We can look and say, man, he is a good fisherman, you know? Like he, I, I got nothing on, yeah, Brett, I got nothing on him, you know what I'm saying? And, or man, she just, this is where I was going to say, like, she is so put together. Her kids are always so clean. And Dave was like, I don't think I'd say that. <laughs> like cleanliness should just be a given, um, you know, but just uh, alluding to those people that just look like they have it all together, right? And it's easy to look at them and think, man, if I could just be like that, man, if I could just have that. And the world of social media just makes it all the more, right? Because every picture that you see is perfect. Everything that they're doing is fun. There's not a struggle. And and I was thinking about this because I have a, a dear friend. Her name's Laura, too. Um, and we went to Bible college together. And she is just like her, she's such an awesome person. And her home always just looks beautiful. Totally different style than me. Like completely just minimalistic, whatever. And I'm looking through the, the pictures the other day and I'm like, I've done it all wrong. Like my house should look like this. What have I done? Like all the decorations have to go. I just need one plant right here. Like that is it because I love that look. It's gorgeous, you know, and, and I kind of chuckled at myself because I'm like, what am I doing? You know, like that's not me. That's not who I am. But so many times we get caught up in mimicking other people's lives and mimicking other people's gifts, others, other people's callings, and we get caught in this game of comparison, you know, and it's so good to go back to Psalm 139 and to read and to remember that we are created in God's image, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, that his works are wonderful. I know that full well. And it's so easy to allow the enemy to come in and to just speak these lies of just inadequacy, of insecurity. Who are you? What, all you do is, I mean, you work all day, you come home to kids. What, what difference are you making? What impact do you have? You know, all you go work on the construction site all day, and, you know, then he's telling the enemy's putting these thoughts, and you come home, you, you never spend time with your family. You don't have time with your kids. What, do you, what are you doing? You know what I mean? And we, we allow all these insecurities and all these thoughts to come in and to rob us of our joy and to rob us of who we truly have been called to be because God's called you to be somebody different than he's called me to be. He's called you to be something different than he's called me to be. And just like it tells us in, um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we all have a different part to play, right? And so if we're busy, caught up, mimicking everybody else, then our piece to the puzzle is left blank. But you know what? That's th what the enemy wants for your life. He doesn't want you to figure out what God's called you to be. He doesn't want you to walk in the fullness of Christ. He doesn't want you to tap into that prayer life. He wants to keep you busy. He wants to keep you isolated because then he's backed you into a corner and rendered you useless. Because let me tell you something, God has created you to be a mighty warrior for him. Every single person in this room, you have a purpose and you have a calling. God makes no mistakes and he's put something inside of you. Whether you're quiet and a server behind the scenes or whether you're loud and funny and do whatever, I don't even know. But every single person, you're as an individual, you are created with a specific reason from the Lord. And so I want to encourage you, you know, to seek that out. Pray for that. Again, find somebody that's going to speak life into you and is going to call out your giftings and look at things and say, hey, you're gifted in this area. You're, you're really good at that. Have you thought about, you know, maybe starting a prayer group or have you thought about helping with outreach or doing these different things and those people that are going to call those things forward in you and just to help you be the you that God has created you to be. Um, I want to show you a picture Real quick, this is my all-time favorite. Um, it says, although the threads of my life have often seemed knotted, I know by faith that on the other side of the embroidery there is a crown. And this was by Corey Ten Boom. And I just, I love this picture because I don't know if you've seen embroidery or anything like that, but the other side of it, it is a tangled, knotted mess, right? And it looks ugly, and I think so, I have, this is the background on my computer because so many times we get caught up in life and we just look out and all we see is a mess, right? And we just look out and we're like, God, what on earth is going on? Maybe you've moved that piece of furniture and the mess is laid out before you and you think, where do I even start? Like, this is such a mess. Where on earth do I even start? Maybe everything is swirling around you. You know, maybe you're the mom that's saying, God... I need help. Like, I'm drowning. How in the world am I supposed to get this kid here, this kid there? You know, I'm failing at work. My boss is on me. I got to go in for overtime. What? I, my husband wants to play chess. Like, you know, what? I, my kids need to get to their games. Did y'all, were y'all here for that sermon? The chess sermon? 
Okay, just make sure. You know, and you have all these pressures, all these demands, and all these people that need everything from you all at once, it seems. And you feel like you're drowning, and you feel like you don't measure up. You don't feel like you're a good mom. You don't feel like you're a good coworker. You don't feel like your boss is proud of you. You don't feel like you're a good wife. You know, maybe you don't feel like you're a good husband. Maybe you feel way too much pressure that you should be bringing in more money than what you're bringing in. And we let all these pressures of the world sink down in, and when we look out, we see an absolute mess. And we think, God, where did I go wrong? Where, where on earth? Maybe we're saying, God, you just messed up, <laughs> you know? And I'm encouraged because I can remember that even though when I'm looking out, I see the mess, when God's looking down, he can see the crown, right? He can see the masterpiece, and he can say, you know, keep on keeping on, one step forward, one step at a time, and allow him to continue weaving and just working that masterpiece and that story in your life, that masterpiece that is you, that he has created, and be encouraged by that this morning because we, we sometimes see the mess, but he sees what he's working on. And we, we have to walk through the fire sometimes. It's not always rainbows and butterflies. But like Dave said on Wednesday night, if you were here, it's not oftentimes that God delivers us from the fire, but he's so faithful to walk through it with us, right? He's so faithful to walk with us through whatever situation that we are walking through. And so I want to encourage you with that this morning to allow God to keep weaving your masterpiece, to keep creating that beautiful work in you. And remember when you see something ugly, he sees a crown. He sees something beautiful. Um, If I could, I would like to have all the ladies stand and come to the front. You don't even have to be a mom yet. If you are a teenager, young adult, whatever, if you're a female in the room, moms of course, I want for you to go ahead and make your way to the front. Look at this, guys. You should be giving them a round of applause. Awesome. What a village of people. (laughs) This is amazing. I'm going to have you start out turning around facing me. I want to talk at you some more. Everyone push in tight. We got a lot of people. Man, guys, I think you're outnumbered (laughs) by quite a bit. You need to get your... (laughs) Yeah, that's true. There are a lot of guys outside. That is true. So get in as close as you can. I hope we have enough. Um, but we have um, little flowers that we're going to give you. They're cr- handmade crocheted flowers, and on them, um, can I have one of them? Do you mind? Thank you. Yeah, just one. So we have little crocheted flowers. Um, a little lady helped me make these. Bless her heart. It was very sweet of her. Well, I say help me make them. I probably made like 10. She did the rest. She's fast. Um, but on there, it says Philippians 1, 6, and it says, I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. And so I want you to take these flowers home today for Mother's Day 2017, and I want you to put them up somewhere in your house, wherever it is that you can look at it. I couldn't embroider anything for everybody. I'm sorry. But this, I'm hoping that when you look at it that you'll remember Man, it might be a messy day. It might seem really messy, but God is creating something beautiful. Just like this ball of yarn was a mess, but something beautiful was crafted out of it. Something beautiful came out of it and was created out of it. And so I want you to remember that he who started a good work in you, if you've moved that piece of furniture and it's messy, maybe you know what piece of furniture you need to move and you know what you need to work on and it's daunting, he's faithful. Once you start it, once he started that work in you, he will bring it to completion. It might not look what you think it's going to look like. Sometimes it's going to get messier, but he's faithful to bring it to completion. And I'm so encouraged by all these women that are up here. And I just want to tell you, if any of you women feel alone, if you feel isolated, if you feel alone in a crowd, you are dead wrong. Because look at the village, look at the sisters that are around you that are willing to pray for you, that are willing to cry with you, laugh with you, and do life with you. And th- Hello, my name's Dave, and I'm the pastor here at Antioch Baptist Church. I just want to thank you for joining us for this time of praise and worship. I hope that it impacted your life and that it inspired you to take your relationship with God 
to the next level. If you were watching today and you felt convicted by the Lord to accept Christ as Savior and Lord of your life, I want you to pray this simple prayer with me. Just say, Dear Jesus, I am a sinner. I need you to make me new. I invite you into my life to be my Lord and to be my master. I believe that you rose from the dead, and I believe that you are the Son of God, and I believe that you will return to the earth again to take me home to be with you. Jesus, thank you for saving me. Thank you for dying for my sin. I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and if you responded to this message today, we'd love to hear about it. I want you to contact us here at the church and let us know about the impact that it's had on your life so that we can celebrate with you and so that we can give you some resources to help you in furthering your walk with Jesus. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you. And remember to love, connect, go, and grow. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness?